The following is a reflection on the readings for Thursday of the 31st week of Ordinary Time. The first reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 to 8. The responsorial is Psalm 104, and the Gospel is Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. In today's Gospel, there are two parables about the one lost sheep and the one lost coin, which basically make the same points. The first point is that God is always in search of the lost and spares no expense in the effort, even at the cost of his only son. This was a completely new concept for the religion of the day. The scribes and Pharisees considered it unthinkable to search out sinners, especially among the Gentiles. An interesting example of this thinking is in the form of a rabbinic commentary on the book of Numbers, which coincidentally involves sheep. I will quote the story. A king had a number of sheep and goats, which went forth every morning to the pasture, and returned in the evening to the stable. One day a stag joined the flock, and grazed with the sheep, and returned with them. Then the shepherd said to the king, There is a stag which goes out with the sheep and grazes with them, and comes home with them. And the king loved the stag exceedingly. And he commanded the shepherd, saying, Give heed unto this stag, that no man beat it. And when the sheep return in the evening, he would order that the stag should have food and drink. Then the shepherds said to him, My lord, you have many goats and sheep and kids, and you give us no directions about these, but about this stag you give us orders day by day. Then the king replied, It is the custom of the sheep to graze in the pasture, but the stag dwells in the wilderness, and it is not their custom to come among men in the cultivated land. But to this stag who has come to us and lives with us, should we not be grateful that he has left the great wilderness where many stags and gazelles feed and has come to live among us? It behooves us to be grateful. So too spoke the Holy One, quote, I owe great thanks to the stranger in that he has left his family and his father's house and come to dwell among us. Therefore I order in the law, love the stranger. End of quote. Notice in the story, the proselyte, that is, the stag, is only admitted into the care of the sheep because the stag, on its own initiative, willingly came in. Only then was it accepted. There is no hint of any attempt on the part of the shepherd to go out to invite all the other stags who were still in the wilderness to come in. According to this thinking, only if a repentant sinner came back and pleaded for mercy, then perhaps God might forgive and receive the person. This is why the scribes and Pharisees kept such a distance from whom they considered unclean. They were forbidden from being a guest in such a person's home or receiving them or transacting any business whatsoever, and they took great satisfaction in knowing that God's wrath would come upon such a person and that they would be destroyed. So when Jesus freely ate and drank with tax collectors and prostitutes and preached these parables, the religious leaders were scandalized. This should perhaps cause us to think, how much do we go out of our way to help someone who is spiritually lost? Do we pray for sinners and those who do not know God or refuse to believe? Are we educated in church teaching and sacred scripture so that, as St. Peter says, quote, we may be always ready to give an answer for the hope that dwells within us. End of quote. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 Do we look for opportunities to witness to our faith, or are we more apt to judge and condemn, or at least be passive regarding outsiders, and only accept those who happen to wander through our church doors? The second point of these parables emphasizes the great joy in heaven when a sinner repents. St. Thomas Aquinas gives us the reason in his Summa Theologica on the effects of grace on the soul, question 113, article 9, quote, The justification of the ungodly, which terminates at the eternal good of a share in the Godhead, is greater than the creation of heaven and earth. End of quote. Do we rejoice when someone repents and seeks forgiveness, especially when they have hurt us, or do we harbor grudges? 
are we like the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son, who refused to accept his younger brother because he could only see the injustice of it all? Perhaps what we should do is reflect often on our own lives and how Jesus Christ has sought us out and reconciled us with the Father through his death on the cross. May this truth always nourish our efforts to join Jesus in searching for the lost and truly rejoicing when they are found. As well, we can reflect on what St. Paul teaches in today's first reading from Philippians chapter 3. After listing all his past accomplishments, including membership in the tribe of Benjamin, with all the privileges of being one of the chosen ones, including the divine promises and covenants and temple worship, having been born a Hebrew of Hebrew parents, educated a Pharisee, and faultless as far as the law can make one perfect. Paul considers these credentials rubbish in comparison to knowing Christ as Lord. In other words, Paul lived on a much higher level after his conversion, not relying on physical accoutrements, but only on the risen Christ. With that new mindset, that is, having the mind of Christ, Paul could make such statements as, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, and I have become all things to all people, that I might save some. The question for our reflection is, are we weighed down with human accomplishments that confine us to this life because we value them so much? Or can we say with Paul that our life in Christ greatly transcends the earthly so much that it pains us to keep silent. As today's responsorial psalm proclaims, O oh, sing to the Lord, sing his praises, tell all his wonderful works, be proud of his holy name, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. End of quote. In his apostolic exhortation on the joy of the gospel, Pope Francis commented on our search for the lost with the good news of Jesus Christ. Quote, the church is called to come out of herself and go to the peripheries, not only geographically, but also existential peripheries, the mystery of sin and pain, of injustice, of ignorance, of indifference to religion, of intellectual current, and of all misery, end of quote. These existential peripheries can be found right in our own families and communities next door, if we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. May we be attentive to those who are suffering in any aspect of physical and especially spiritual woundedness and be prepared to go out with the power of the Holy Spirit as Christ's disciples. One last point. When the shepherd found the one lost sheep, he laid it on his shoulders to carry it back home. Notice the great intimacy in the rescue. There is no hint of scolding the sheep for its neglect, but only tenderness. Again, the lesson for us is to imitate the Good Shepherd. We evangelize through love and compassion, knowing that we were ourselves rescued by God. Therefore, personal investment is required as we lead a person by the hand into the community of Christ's Church so that friendships are made not just with God, but with other believers who can continue the journey. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen.